Guys, it's like Christmas Eve for me right now because tomorrow morning I am driving to go pick up five new sheep. This is such a big deal. We've had uh, Dorper sheep here for oh, years. I've had Dorper sheep in my life for years now and I'm excited to try Katahdin sheep. Um, we're just going to get five young, freshly weaned ram lambs. And so I wanted to talk about what are the things you need to have done and ready to go before you actually go get your first sheep. So let's start with what's behind me here. Um, this is an electric fence. So our pasture is in pretty good shape right now. I would say the a lot of it's gone to seed, which you can probably guess by what's behind me. There's plenty of clover and small grasses underneath there. So what I've done is I've just kind of mowed a lane for the electric fence because although this pasture is probably about two acres, um, I don't give them the full two acres. What I want to do is drive them through this gate. Um, and then you can see I've got kind of a corral back there where the sheep are going to go. I want to drive through this gate back up to the corral, unload them in the corral, let my truck leave the gates, and then they're going to have this honestly very small paddock. So the reason why I like this small paddock is because I want them to get used to the idea of rotation from day one. Um, I know a little bit about their behavior and their, their current owner does not rotate them. They have kind of a small paddock and they mostly get fed hay and feed. Whereas over here, we're grass fed, baby, uh, which is cheaper. <laughs> if you've got the land, put them on grass. So we've got this small paddock right here. If This is a hundred foot fence and you can see I had to zigzag it um, to, to kind of shorten it up right here. So this is less than a hundred feet by probably 50 feet um, pretty darn small paddock but I made it small intentionally because when you mob graze the whole idea is you want them to eat the grass down we've had great success in the past with mob grazing sheep um, and so the plan right now is to basically go from this paddock to this paddock and I've got another lane mowed down there I don't have the fences up yet um, but there's in this whole pasture right here, you can see to the tree line, um, I've got five different paddocks set up. The one that I'm currently in is the smallest right now. And the reason the first one is going to be the smallest, it's intentional because I want them to get used to, you know, <laughs> eating everything, um, especially when we've got a lot of tall grasses that have gone to seed, uh, which as much as I'm happy about grass going to seed, um, there's still plenty of stuff down there. There's a lot of clover for them to eat. There's some small younger grasses. But the idea is once they leave a paddock, I will mow it um, so we can get kind of an even growth back. And then they're off to the next paddock. So this was all very intentional. What I don't recommend is giving your sheep full reign of, you know, a big acreage and then trying to mob graze them. Maybe depending on your season, like if it's winter time, perhaps that makes more sense for you but in my opinion I would like them to get used to again these are young sheep they're, they're gonna be weaned from mom um, and basically brought over here uh, so what I am doing intentionally is making sure that they've got this small run to start off with so they get used to the mob graze mentality and so I can learn you know how much uh, how much do you eat how often do I move you I think the goal is every seven to ten days I'd like to move them okay let's talk about transportation for a second this is why I really like raising sheep on a small scale because the transportation is not that intense I don't own a trailer I've never owned a trailer um, instead I've got this uh, that I uh, this tartar farm and ranch piece right here that basically is uh, a cage that that fits in the bed of a truck um, it seems small but again I'm and I'm picking up five sheep but they're all lambs so they're gonna have plenty of room in there for their hour and a half journey they're gonna be happy in there it look you can see by the weather here it's kind of got that vibe of it could rain at any second um, so uh, doing them the kindness of taking what will be their shelter tomorrow and indefinitely I use that as their 
shelter on the pasture, but right now I've basically looped it over itself and uh, tied it in the back and then used the tie downs to, uh, to go right there and then give them a board just so they're not sliding around on the grooves in the bed of the truck. But um, for $500, that purchase is a lot cheaper than a trailer. And again, if you're working with young sheep uh, on a small scale, you can't beat that price and ease of use. So there are just a few things that I still need to put out here, um, which will take me, I don't know, five or ten minutes, and they're not totally necessary uh, the second the sheep get here. Um, but I do have them on standby. Number one is uh, um, an energizer for this fence. I don't just give them um, a fence. Also, that's not for the fence. I don't know if anyone was wondering that. The solar is for the house, not, not the electric fence. Um, but yeah, I'll give the fence an energizer. Um, another piece is obviously water uh, and minerals. And then I will also have uh, their shelter set up. In a perfect world, their shelter would be up right now. But the tarp that I use for that, uh, I just showed you, I'm using it as the cover in the car, or in the truck, I should say, to keep them. So uh, yeah, like I said, that stuff should take all about 10 minutes I'll put together. But uh, I have enough to feel comfortable and go to sleep tonight and wake up early in the morning and go get the sheep. Have I said it enough? I'm so excited to be getting sheep again. Um, so I'll see you guys in the morning. I'm going to try to sleep. I'm like a kid uh, at Christmas waking up early in the morning and going to go get some sheep. So they're here, if you can see them, in my very weedy, high gra tall grass corral right now. We've got them unloaded. I've got the fence on, the fence is hot. Um, just seeing if I can get them out of this corral right now. But man, it is so fun having sheep back on the homestead. Love sheep. So there's the corral that I haven't quite gotten them out of yet. <clears throat> but uh, this is where I'm gonna try to get them. Uh, they've got shade here. I took my weed whacker and just kind of crudely cleaned under there so they'll get the point and know that they can lay their head down there when the sun inevitably comes out. As promised, I got them uh, some minerals, which have seeped through the holes a little bit. So that's probably a little bit of a waste of money on my part. But they've got minerals and kelp right there. They've got water. They've got shelter. Um, and driving my truck on the pasture is kind of matted down some grass, so they're not going to get totally buried in here. Um, the fence is hot. I've tested it. Last step is just to get them to come over. And here we are, uh, five young rams, all different colors, all kind of Katahdin mutts with a little bit of dorper in them. Everyone's here on our first little pasture. So they were weaned on Tuesday, I found out, so everyone has kind of gotten all their crying out. Uh, if you've ever weaned sheep, you know what that's like. So... They're just here, ready to party, ready to grow up. Um, I love that they all have kind of unique markings so I can tell them apart without any tags. They're obviously, they're undocked. Uh, they still have their tails, as you can see, about as natural as you can be. Man, I really am so excited to have these sheep. I am just excited to be a shepherd again. I was recalling to my wife last night, it's been almost a year since we sold our ewes, and then it's been about three months two or three months since uh, we sold our last two rams we've had some pigs in the meantime to kind of scratch the itch of animals but there's just nothing like sheep i'm really excited to be a shepherd again so i will be doing videos as these katahdins grow up to kind of compare and contrast the differences between katahdin and dorper i've only had these guys for a few hours right it hasn't been that long but i'm noticing a lot of differences between them these guys are not nearly as skittish as my dorpers were they're very docile they don't jump around as much which isn't always a good thing you know like there's the downside to that is maybe they won't take care of themselves as good as the dorper i don't know but i'm excited to discover those differences so if you've ever thought about you know katahdin or dorper or some kind of mix stay tuned because we're going to be talking about that a lot on this channel thanks for sharing so far my journey with sheep this is kind of like chapter two of, uh, of sheep for me in a long book of mistakes and a lot of joy and success and failures and everything in between. Uh, so thanks for sticking with me. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead, and I'll see you on the next video.